UHF radios. So often you hear or you read on social media where someone is about to go on their big caravanning trip and they ask, is it necessary to have a UHF radio fitted to the vehicle? Well, necessity, um, I guess, is really up to the individual, but there's no legal requirement that says you need one, but you've got to ask yourself in the end, why is every heavy vehicle in the transport industry fitted with a radio? And I think that'll answer most of the questions. I'm no radio guru, but I'll run through what we're using, and it's actually three different radios that we use while we're going away or when we go away and I'll explain what we've got and why we've got it and some of the pitfalls that perhaps someone can go into when they first set up a radio in their vehicle. What I'll go through first is the UHF radios that we use and then the aerials that we've got and the way in which they're mounted. The first radio that we had fitted to this vehicle was the one that we're looking at now and that's got all the controls on the handpiece it's very easy to use in one regard but can be a little bit uh, problematic in others where you're sharing uh, two functions on the one uh, button. The big advantage of a unit like this is when you're struggling for room where you've got nowhere to mount a, a single DIN unit and uh, so much easier to put this one and just hang the mic wherever you want it and away we go. One of the disadvantages that we found with a unit like this is when you wanted to change channels when you're scanning between two channels. If you're scanning on channel 18 and 40 and you receive something and you want to change it to, from one to the other, it's actually 22 clicks on the up or the down arrow on the channel change button, which really wasn't very good when we're driving and you've got to change channels. It was just too awkward, so we moved away from this set in the end. The latest unit that Oricrum sell, which is very similar to this, has actually got a thumb wheel on the uh, handpiece itself and it allows you to very quickly change channels, much better than the pressing it 22 times like we do with this one. The main radio that we use in this vehicle now is a single DIN unit, it's actually a GME radio and to enable us to find somewhere to mount something like that we've had to fit the roof console very hard to get a good photo or a video of something like this with all the light but one advantage of this one that uh, I do like is the volume and the squelch and the channel change they're all on a rotation rotating uh, knob so it's very quick to change channels or make any adjustments while traveling you can actually do it without even looking at the set it's much easier to use than the previous one we had fitted if room is an issue uh, when selecting a UHF radio, you can always go for a handheld one. This one here is only a 2 watt, but if you're going to use it as your main radio, it really needs to be a 5 watt unit. Uh, GME do a one now that is a, uh, what they call, I think, a, a travel kit. It's a portable unit that has its own aerial that you can do with a magnetic base on the roof. And when you're finished with it, it's only a matter of just packing it away and away you go. You can use it for your caravan trip if you want to, and then sell it when you get home. And that way you're not paying for an install of the unit on the vehicle itself. We use our little handheld uh, when we're reversing the caravan. One will be behind the van and obviously one in the car pushing the caravan backwards and you've got contact with the person there that's got the eyes right there where you're trying to push the van and saves running into things. There's many different types of aerials that you can buy but when we chose ours the first thing that we wanted to make sure of was it gave us good universal range whether we're in hilly terrain or open flat country because different uh, DVI aerials will give you different responses to that and the most common one that we've been advised to use and accordingly we've always used is a 6.6 .6 DVI aerial and that gives us the average of everything else that you've got. The best thing though to make sure is when you get one that's got a good spring base on the bottom, uh, mounting them on a bull bar over time we've found this gives us the best uh, advantage of uh, longevity on the aerials and obviously something that's not too high so when we go in under a carport we're not having to take the thing off every time we want to go in and out it's just a convenience to put it on get the best of what we've got and uh, away we'll go from there without having too many problems with it 
the arrow that we use for our second radio is very similar to the one on the other side once again mounted on the bull bar nice sturdy heavy spring base so give the aerial a bit of flex if we hit something this one's a little bit different than the other one it's more rigid here but that's just the way it's made there's no benefit to it that we've ever found it's a 6.6 .6 dbi once again so all of my aerial cables are run inside of the plastic corrugated um, tubing and that's done like that all the way from the aerial right back through to the firewall and that way it can't be rubbed and chafed and affect the signal strength of the radio. If you like the video that you just watched give us a thumbs up and if you want to see more of our videos hit the subscribe button and once you've done that tap on the bell and change the notification to all that way every time we do uploads to our YouTube channel you'll be notified.